Hi guys, it's Ulrich here and I'm on a mission to bridge cultural gaps. And today I'll be speaking to Monique, a serial entrepreneur who is based in Dubai. She's actually been in Dubai for over a decade. Uh, and I actually met her through her venture called Afrocentric, which was an Afrobeats party, one of the only Afrobeats parties in Dubai at the time. And she really shaped my time in Dubai. So we talk about that venture and her other amazing ventures. She has an events company. She also has just recently opened a restaurant that specializes in Caribbean burgers, which is amazing for me. And she has recently started a talk called Can We Talk that brings together Black voices throughout the UAE to speak on issues in the community and in the world. So we talk about all of those things and her vision for her future, which I think is really cool. So I'm really excited for you to join this talk. And do make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. All right, let's get into it. But first of all, the reason I wanted to talk to you is obviously you know that our people don't know that you have or started one of the first Afrobeats, like truly authentic Afrobeats parties in Dubai, which I attended when I was living in Dubai religiously. Every event I was at. We missed you in the dance floor. I know. I was like the event of like whenever it happened, I was like, oh my god, yes, this is the like the event of the month, you know. Um, and you are behind that, and really, that really shaped my my time in Dubai, just because. I always want to be in a place where I can express myself in, you know, however way I want to. And Afrobeats is a huge part of me. And, you know, being around other like-minded people of color um, is super important. And I, I think your party not only attracted, like, Blacks from all over the world, but also, you know, Arabs and Europeans. Like, it was so international. And I, I love the vibe, just like an accepting, inclusive vibe. So that's really why I want to talk to you more about that, but also to get to know you a bit more and hear about your background and your story because I feel like you're super interesting as a person as well. So can you just give us a tiny bit of a, an introduction to who you are, what you do, what you're about, and yeah, yeah we can get into it. Um, so for those that don't know me, my name is Monique, um, Mon Bell for short. Um, so I've been in the UAE for about just over 10 years, I lose count. Um, I've been here for a long time. Yeah, you're, uh, like, uh, you're an Emirat <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the passport. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so my background is events. I came over from the UK. I went to start working with Atlantis Hotel. And just while I've been here, I've been able to um, move through a few different event and entertainment companies uh, until I finally plucked up the courage to set up my own business a second time around. But before I came to the, Dubai, I had... Uh, I was at uni studying uh, events management and uh, marketing and stuff. Um, and whilst I was at uni, I set up like a, a small little events company also. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, in Dubai, I, you know, I'd been here for a few years at that point and I'd seen, and I still feel like even today, Dubai is such a, a blank piece of paper in terms of, I feel like there's still so much opportunity here. Um, so it was good for me to kind of be situated in all these different kind of companies just to see, you know, their strengths and, and the weaknesses and things that, you know, they, they, they maybe weren't necessarily um, um, maximizing on. Totally. Uh, and the companies that I worked with after Atlantis were a lot smaller. Um, some of them were startups. So it was nice to be able to, um, and I progressed quite quickly. So it was nice to feel like I was run, running a company without the financial uh, uh, burden um so yeah when it got time to me wanting to start my own thing um i kind of felt like okay cool i've, I've kind of seen how it's done um i've seen how they do it so let, let's try and, and and bring my own little flair into it and so yeah. i've been running those guys for almost six years now um mm. and we primarily focus on events um so we do corporate events but we also uh, focus on nightlife as well um, I love music um, and um, Afrocentric what you were mentioning was uh, an event is an event that I started with another DJ here we worked on an event previously in the co one of the companies that I worked in before yeah. um, that focused on Afro house music um, but we saw that there wasn't really any authenticity there 
um, and something that we thought we could really bring. Uh, and lo and behold, you know, three, four years later, we've, we've managed to do that. We've managed to have a, a, a good, consistent, authentic, um, black owned, black run night that we're really proud of. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we felt as well with Afrocentric was that, as you mentioned, um, while it was it is black owned, black run, and, and very very unapologetically black, we we wanted it to be uh, a platform that showed you a different side of uh, of Africa and different side of mu- you know African music specifically. Um, a lot of the Afro beats and Afro nights tend to be to take place down in places like Bur Dubai and Zira and round the back street of somewhere that you can't really find, um, and so. You know, having come from um, a bit more of a, um, let's say, a, a bit more of a co- more corporate event setting where, you know, events were held in beautiful venues, you know, Masimi Beach and, you know, oh, so sorry, the mosque is on now. Um, <laughs> Literally. Trials and tribulations of living in Dubai. Yeah. Five times a day. Yeah, exactly. Um... I actually find it quite calming, though, I have to say. I love it. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the things I miss about Dubai. It's just, like, I, don't, I mean, like, obviously religion is different for everybody, but I think, like, different aspects of religion are interesting, and I think the call to prayer is something that, like, just reminds you of, like, your spirituality, even if you're not Muslim or anything like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I was saying, yeah, so, so, you know, coming from a slightly more maybe corporate um, structured event place with Atlantis and the other companies that I worked with yeah. uh, and then but also really loving and enjoying my nightlife I wanted to be able to find a way to marry the two so and specifically to uplift um, you know black music um, so we we started off in a little venue down in uh, Business Bay um, but it wasn't quite right and then we moved to another venue it's a bit like Goldilocks and the porridge so we moved to a second venue and that was One's too small, one's too big. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that was better, but also not quite there. And yeah. then um, by accident, um, I bumped into a friend of mine and I was, you know, chatting to Moss, so what are you up to now? I see you kind of broken out and done your own thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this. Um, I need to find a venue. He was like, oh, I might know a place. So we, we, I went to um, Pure Sky Lounge. Um, which is on the JBR walk, beautiful view. It's right yeah. on the water. You've got the palm, you've got the marina, you've got the light. It's on the uh, 35th floor. It's yeah, gorgeous. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they weren't doing anything. This beautiful venue wasn't being used to its full potential. Um, so I sat down with the, with the manager and I said, listen, Mark, this is what I want to do. This is the concept. You know, I've done it here before. Um, but I think it could really work here. And, and the music and the vibe, like, you know, like yeah. just with those beats and the, the vocals, and just yeah. it worked. And it, it, by the water it, as well. And uh, exactly, yeah. Exactly. It's an outside event. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did our first event and it was, um, it was a success. Um, and Pure Sky Lounge has been our home ever since. But, and, it, and it was just, it was important for us to have the event in a venue like that. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, up until that point, I felt like it was mainly the, the white, um, you know, white Arab, yeah. um, white European, um, white American events that were taking place in this nice part of town. Right. And then you know, the other events were taking, the other events were taking part on the other side of town because totally. nobody up here kind of really wanted us. Um, unless their venues were failing, then okay, sure, bring your R&B and hip hop. But once <laughs> you start getting busy, then That's please. Like last resort. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, so Afrocentric was reborn. Um, and then that's when our, we really started to see a change in our audience as well. As you mentioned, you know, it, 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 we started to open up to um, a more diverse audience, which was important to us, you know, diversity. Um, and, and yeah, and, and as you said, we saw people from, you know, different walks of life, different countries, different backgrounds, different yeah. stories. And the one thing that I love, love, love about Afrocentric is, is a place where you can come, you can come on your own and not know anybody and leave with a whole host of new friends. Oh my God, um, totally. Yeah, like I have friends who, who met 
they're a really, really good friend of mine, one of my best friends actually. She met her husband at Afrocentric. No way. Yeah, what a wedding. Like, and that's just for me. Even thinking about it now, I was like, that's for I'm me. I'm getting pumped. That's so cool. Beautiful, you know? Yeah. No, but I totally, I totally get it. I felt the same way when I went there. I mean, first of all, I'm glad that you said that um, you wanted to be in a place that was more inclusive just because I have the same experience of going to, you know, African or Afro beats parties anywhere in the world, by the way. This is not just a Dubai thing. Like, it's usually yeah. like in, like, the ghetto or, like, somewhere yeah. that, like, <laughs> nobody else besides, like, Black people know about or that want to go to. And you end up being in this, this bubble. And me being a person that I've lived in Dubai, I've lived in all these different places, I want to be able to share um, my music and my culture with all these yeah. other people. and it doesn't serve me or them to have it in a place that's like far out that nobody really wants to go to. So I'm glad that you were able to do that. And I think that, I mean, I think that the trend is getting more so that way around the world, like Afrobeats is becoming more mainstream. It's, it's you know, the venues are getting better and they're in better parts of town, but I think there can still be work done. But I think you've done a really good job of bringing that to a really nice venue with you know, great atmosphere that can really include a lot of people. Um, but I also felt the same way. Whenever I went to your parties, it was just like, everybody was in good vibes. Like you could meet anybody, everybody was smiling, happy. You know, I just like, I made so many good friends there. I brought all my friends there. They made good friends there. And I think the word just spread really quickly for at least within my circle of people. Um, so I think that is the joy that you really brought from that event to the rest of the world. And I, and I hope that it keeps on growing and growing and growing as well. Yeah. I just bring the gets out of the way and, you know, lets us continue with our life and hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I know, I know, I know. Um, but I know that you also, obviously you have the events company, but you mentioned you have a restaurant as well, which I'm so annoyed because I <laughs> left before you opened it, but I would have been down for that because it's like burgers, but with a, a Caribbean, Tilt. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so events, events in my life, events is something that I'm like, I just, I, I love it. I love the excitement. I love the, 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 you know, the slower parts. I love the uncertainty. Yeah. I love the, you know, going into a place and just new, the new faces and just the pressure. Like, I love all of it. And, um, like I have this uh, this vision, hopefully, um, you know, I want to be the next Live Nation, but with soul, you know, I want to yes. be, that's the, that's the vibe. You're putting it out yeah. there into the universe, it's happening. That's, exactly. <laughs> um, and the thing that, the, the, the business model that I like about Live Nation is that um, they, they're, they're completely 360, like they, you know, they're fully self-sufficient. They have their own venues. They're artists. Totally. In those venues, they own the F&B. Within the F&B, like, they own all the staff. Like, the car parking is there. The, you know, the concerts, the merchandise, the ticketing. Like, and I love that they have their own, like, ecosystem. So, you know, if one part of the business isn't, you know, for example, like, events, you know, if one part of the business isn't, isn't working, they can go to a, a different part of the yeah. business. That could, so I, I love yeah exactly yeah. um then when i look at when i think about it in terms of myself and, and what i want to build you know I, I want to build legacy and i want to build generational wealth and Ooh, for me, oh, you're, oh those are my buzzwords you're just <laughs> those words. okay i love it and i like the idea of I, I love the idea of family and family business and 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 of course blood family is very important to me so i, I you know i have daydreams of you know, going into a, a boardroom meeting and my mum's at one end and my sister's over here and my other sister's <laughs> over here and my brother's here and my wife is over there. Uh, like, yes, you know, yeah. like that's, that's the vibe. But, you know, with that, you know, I want to be able to build an ecosystem, a business, an empire that also, um, you know, works for my community and also um, empowers my community. Um, you know, if, if one person can eat, we can all eat. It's, yeah. it's a lot. So um, with O Burger, that kind of came about as, um, you know, I wanted to do more events. I wanted to do more bigger scale events. And the thing that, he, well, specifically here in, in the UAE is that, um, you know, F&B is a bit of a tricky subject when it comes to venues because that's the way the venues make their money. 
Um, but the promoter always gets a really poor deal, always, uh, whether it's a percentage of the bar or just the revenue that they take away from you for the food or the restrictions you have. And I just didn't want to be in that position. I wanted to, 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 to own and to manage as many elements of, of my business as I possibly could um, to you know, retain that revenue and to put it back into my business rather than it being taken away. Right. I also feel like you know, I've taken all this risk and booked all these artists and done all these marketing and stuff. For you to then come and take 70% of the revenue, that doesn't no. make sense. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I'm like, what could I do? What could, what, what could be a good brand? What could be a good addition to the event? especially still live events I want to do that, you know, could turn over quickly. Um, everyone likes a good burger, right? Um, so I remember I was sitting with my mum. I love my mum. I was sitting with my mum and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. So, you know, I want to potentially look at doing a burger, but something simple and but that's, that's tasty. Um, and, you know, coming from a, a, a Caribbean, African household, you know, you wow. know, flavour, food, spices, seasoning, good Probably. meat marinade like that's all that's part of our upbringing you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, I remember being a kid and being at home and you know my mum you know on a Saturday I'm gonna I'm gonna cook dinner tonight brilliant great and it's this is at two o'clock you said I'm cooking I'm gonna cook dinner I'm gonna start cooking dinner now I'm like, okay great seven o'clock the food's still not ready mum like come on eight o'clock the food is still not ready but the smells coming from that kitchen like and and just and, and you're ducking in and you're taking salivating you're like yeah Listen, exactly. So I wanted to bring, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, taking a little sweet over here, a little piece of yam over there, like, mm. and like, I wanted to, so I wanted to bring like those flavors into um, a burger, basically. Yeah. Um, so she's like, listen, I know this chef, he's from our island, so my mum's from Dominica, um, and um, you know, maybe you can look at doing this and doing it with a bit of a twist. I'm like, you know what, you're totally right. Um, and so, yeah, so that's where the concept of a burger came. And then um, we opened up a, like a dark kitchen in JLT um, and then jumped onto Deliveroo and just and started that way, basically. Yeah. It's still a new, uh, new business. We only opened in October, um, so not even in the first year yet. And then coronavirus came and kind of put a bit of a pause on all of that. Um, for the moment, um, but we're hoping to open up again in uh, September. Oh, I mean, um, when things kind of calm down a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's something that like I'd love to hopefully see grow. Um, you know, and hopefully you know have have franchises. You know, I'd like I'd like Oberger to have its one Oberger flagship Oberger restaurant. Nothing huge. Um, a few seats, but just like a nice atmosphere with good, good quality food. But then to have franchises, you know, in different places. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I Ask me that. again in another 12 months. <laughs> yeah. no, I love that. I feel like, first of all, bringing your background into what you're doing is so important just because you, with, with, your, with bringing your background, you bring your passion as well. I feel like if you're being true to who you're, you are, obviously with the Afrocentric, and with Oberger, you're kind of bringing both of your sides together, your African side. I know you said your dad's from Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, uh, exactly. Mom side, which is from Dominica, um, to the forefront and kind of just like capitalizing on that. But I also feel like you're, you're riding a, a super like crazy wave right now because I think people are waking up to the fact that, I mean, people always had, especially in the West, like in, in New York and places like London, people always knew that there's, amazing flavor and like Caribbean food and stuff like that. But I think, like I said before, and like we mentioned, it was always in like random parts of town that people didn't really go to unless you were really seeking that out. So the fact that you're making an old burger in a place like JLT, which is right in the center where everybody goes for food. Um, and also in Dubai, I mean, there's, I think there's, you know, I don't know how many, I think it's, it's gotten a bit better now with Miss Deleuze being open there and other like Caribbean places, but Still, literally, not many places. That yeah, can. yeah. And yours is so differentiated as well. It's like a burger place with that Caribbean vibe, so people can get the kind of Western food, but like with some taste of the Caribbean in there as well. Uh, Seasoned food, seasoned meats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I know. We were talking about the last time about um, our Sunday meals or whatever, just because. 
obviously growing up in a Caribbean household, for those of you that don't know, I mean, first of all, I grew up in church, like I went to church religiously and my grandfather was a pastor, but every Sunday, without a doubt, we would have a huge Sunday dinner right after church. And yeah. it would be, my, gra my grandmother would actually start it before we went to church. So she put on like different things before we went to church or prepared different things. And then after church, we came home at maybe three o'clock. We went from church to church from like, I think nine to three. It was a long day. It was like a day of school. <laughs> <laughs> and then come home from church, and this, the food would still be cooking and you wouldn't eat, like you said, until like seven or eight because it would just be seasoning and, and you know, resting in the spices. So I'm glad that you're bringing that influence to what you do. It's amazing. And I hope that it, it grows even more because I think that's, it's so important to have that kind of uh, influence in a place like Dubai, in a place like JLT, with a, like a black owned woman running it, you know, like it's incredible, amazing. Yeah, that's so good. So like, what's, I mean, obviously we can't talk about everything without talking about Corona and how that's affecting the, the event business and the, the restaurant business. How are you coping with that? And how is that, I mean, what are you doing in the meantime while that's happening? I know, I mean, what's Dubai like right now anyways? Is it opening up a um, bit? I mean, it's, it's definitely open up, opening yeah. up, but yeah, it's definitely getting a lot better. Um, I was having a conversation with somebody just yesterday and I said, out of all the places in the world, I feel like Dubai is the right place to be right now, just in terms of how they've handled it. Um, they've done, you know, they've done such an amazing job in terms of all the testing. Yeah. Um, and they've tried really hard to, like, you know, keep uh, uh, keep a handle of things with, you know, make, making sure people are getting fined um, and holding people accountable for like irresponsible behavior during this time, mm. um, holding venues accountable for irresponsible behavior as well. Um, you know, I'm looking at it from two perspectives. I'm a business owner of like, you know, several businesses. So from that side, it's like, Ugh, I kind of want us to get back to normal, you know, yesterday. Yeah. But also at the same time, um, <coughs> I also understand my privilege of, um, you know, being in a position where I don't have to worry as much as others, I guess. Um, and, you know, being able to take this time as a positive time for myself totally. um, and being able to, you know, to rest and being able to, you know, not panic so much. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes the anxiety sets in and I'm like, fuck, but then <laughs> I kind of like get a hold of myself and I'm like, hang on a second, but this and this and this and this and this, okay, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's just, yeah. it's, yeah, when it's been so long, three, four months, I think now. Yeah, I think five, no? Is it five? See, look at that. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. So around, so around Feb, it started to really kick off, and then March was like, nah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You're right, maybe about five. Gosh, can you believe? It's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, I, for, I, but I totally feel you because I feel like, for me, and I feel like for a lot of other people I know, it's been kind of the same thing that you said, like it's, I mean, it's been very anxiety ridden, but also it's been a time to sit back and take stock of your life and see also like where you are, what's working, what's not. And you have the time to kind of reflect and act on that. And I feel like so many people I know have started new venues or ventures or just like thought through what they've been doing in life and figuring out where they want to go. And I think it's been, a, it's been an interesting time in that sense. Obviously, yeah. there's the anxiety of, you know, the virus and whether you're going to get it and you know, losing your job and all that stuff as well. But I think <clears throat> um, people have really taken advantage of this time to kind of really think. And I think it's important. I think I, there is, I feel like in every generation, there is that time, whether it be through war or through oh, sickness or whatever, that yeah. people, no, sure. I hate saying it, but people get the chance to actually sit back and you know really take stock and yeah. reevaluate and and change course if they need to and i think we're doing that as a society in general to be honest not just like on an individual level um so i really hope that we don't and i know that we're not going to be the same uh, as a society as we came into this um especially in i mean for me at least being black and in the states and what's happening there i feel like um not only do we have the, the virus to worry about, but we also have racial injustice that's becoming to the forefront, like hardcore and the Black Lives Matter movement is 
like as strong as ever. And I think this is the time that we're going to see, I mean, hopefully, I think this is the time that we're going to see a, a ton of change. And it's the first time that I really see outside of the States, a lot of support for Black Lives Matter and just, you know, racial injustice yeah. um, and getting that social justice yeah. everywhere in the world. I mean, I, even in London, obviously London, also has its issues with black people, but not as much as the states. But even here, it, I mean, you you have the protests, you have yeah. people really gunning for change in the U.S., but also around the world, and even far out places in Asia and you know the UAE and whatever. You, I see that people are all about Black Lives Matter, so it's it's getting to be such a huge force. Um, but. I think there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think this is the time to do it. And I think we all have time to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing, isn't it? So like I am, so just, so just on what you said there about Black Lives Matter, like when, you know, it's always been there. Yeah. So, it, but I definitely think George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, um, Ahmed Aubrey, like they really, I think it was just like enough, you know, yeah. like just enough, enough. Um, and, I was I was worried at first because I th like it was great seeing all these posts and seeing people get so passionate on you know both you know all races as you said right. all over the world. But I was worried that you know we'd have a week or two weeks of that and then we go back to seeing avocado and sourdough toast on my feed, you know. Because that's how it's always been. It's always been like two weeks of outrage and then nothing. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely a trend, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it's nice to see like these pockets of conversations like happening, you know? Um, and even though I do feel a little bit like the, you know, like with, with the peak starting to come down a little bit, but I'm hoping that we can, if not like ramp it up, but like we can, we could, it doesn't drop too much and we can just be on a, you know, a constant level. But like, I think we definitely need to see more change. We need to yeah. see more from like the big corporations like i remember seeing like a lot of posts from all these different brands oh we support black lives like we're here for you we're going to do one two three a generic copy and paste yeah um, and i was watching something this morning actually um and it was a guy called kurt foston i think his name is i follow him on instagram and facebook mm -hmm. and he did um like a little video saying yeah your pictures are cute your banners are cute your protesting is cute but what happens when you leave here yeah what are you going to do when you leave here? Yeah. What can you put into action? There was another one that I loved as well that said, um, same thing, like, you, I love that you're talking about racial injustice, um, but show me a picture of your, of your board of directors. You know what I mean? That kind of like, show me where your diversity is. Show me where your inclusion is. And I, I love that as well, because it's, it's you know, you need the, you, they need the wake-up call. They need to actually include that and put, um, uh, the money where their mouth is basically 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. um so like during this covid period something also that i've been really thankful for is that um it yes it gave me the time to kind of just do me but also it it helps me enter into another like realm of creativity mm. uh, and like creativity and power and power in terms of like what do I have within me and the skills and the resources that I have at my hands to like really <clears throat> try to help make a difference in my community, specifically here in the UAE, because, because of where we are, we're restricted in terms of, you know, things we can do in terms of the support we can show for different things. Um, you know, and it's, it's great living here, but sometimes you do feel frustrated because you want to say things, you want to do certain things and you realize that you, can't necessarily yeah. um so i wanted to f you know find a way to be able to um to to be proactive and do something but safely um so i, I created a platform called can we talk mm. um and it it i think it was a platform is a platform that's really needed um you know it's a platform that is here to uplift and support black voices and black experiences specifically here in the middle east yeah. um you know uh, and we shot our first um our first uh, like chat show episode a couple of weeks ago um and it's out now and it was just it's just really it was just such a 
I think a big turning point, not just for me, but for everyone else who was part of it, to, to, for us to be able to get together. And it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of our conversation that, you know, in Dubai, we, 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 you know, there are so many of us, but there isn't really a, like a, a common meeting ground for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm really hoping that Can We Talk will be that common meeting place for us. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I'm dedicated to. Um, and something that I'm glad I had time to do because I was thinking like this week if coronavirus wasn't here if I was you know oh burger if I was the event if I was this and this sure I'd be mad and sure I'd say a few things but would I actually have time to actually actively do something yeah honestly I don't think I would yeah 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 and so I think I'm really that's what saying. Yeah, I mean we have so much time to actually act on things now because this has given us that time, which is amazing. So, yeah. double-edged sword. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But, um, no, but yeah, I, but how have you found it? Like being in the UK and obviously I, you work. Like, is it finance? Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, so I work in financial P, uh, communications. Um, I find it, it's an interesting time just because I feel like, like you, I have always been an advocate, obviously, for, you know, racial justice and, you know, getting our voices heard. And my whole goal in life is to give a voice at um, different levels to Black people. And it, sometimes I do it by just being me, you know, who, where I am. I feel um, honestly very privileged to be where I am and just doing the things that I've been able to do, like living in Dubai, working there, living in New York and London and being in the organization that I have been able to be in and being able to bring my authentic self to that place and you know, crushing misconceptions that way because I think that's a powerful way to do it as well. Um, but I also, the reason I kind of started this whole YouTube channel was because, I mean, this was before George Floyd, but it was kind of in the same light of really bringing to light the creativity and the talent that from all different walks of life, from all different people of color, from everywhere, that wasn't really being shown. And I think um, now more than ever, it's super important for me to be out there talking to people like you, to people you know, in other places and that have other experiences and getting our voices heard because I mean, who else is going to talk about us if it's not going to be us, you know? So I think that's, and like, like you were saying before, I don't think I would have the time to do that if it wasn't for coronavirus. I'd probably be running around and doing all this kind of other stuff. So I'm glad that we have, we have the time to do this. Um, and and it, it, doing this has also made me realize that it's even more important than I thought because some of the things that I talk about with people like you and other people, for me, it's like a normal conversation. Like, yeah, of course, you know, you know, this is how we're treated and this is what's going on. And and then I and then I put these videos out there and people come back to me and be like, oh my God, I had no idea. And I'm like, oh damn, it's not, <laughs> you know? So I'm super glad that we're, you know, we're, we're taking action and, and doing these kind of things and talking through it. And I'm so glad that you, you know, you started Can We Talk? And I think with with you, you you already have a great platform with Afrocentric. Like you got them with the entertainment. <laughs> like they're good with the Afrobeats. Now let's hit them with the fucking like social justice and you know the things that come with the Afrobeats. Um, and if I'm honest, that's like, this. I so I said events is what I do. But yeah. I've never thought about like using my event skills for something like this because it is. Yeah. It's cool. Like I never like for me it was always music, live entertainment. This, but this is. I don't know, I just feel like this is just can be so much bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's it's so funny because I feel like it, my whole life, I've always been like, okay, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna change the world? All this stuff. And I just did I just did random things. I moved to Dubai, I worked there, and moved to New York, and I moved to London, and then you know, whatever. And now that I'm doing the things that I'm doing, I'm like, wait, actually, everything that I've been doing has been a progression, you know. And it's like, I, like, it's progressed to what it is now. And I can see now that it's progressing into something bigger and it will progress into something bigger. And I feel like we don't realize that when we're in the moment. And I think it's probably the same for you. Like you probably just started Afrocentric to just like get yourself out there, get your music out there. Yeah, and now snowballing exactly. you know, like you have your own restaurant joint that you know, encompasses who you are. And you have this talk that's talking about social like, injustice and bringing together people of color 
um, to talk about issues and who knows what it's going to be next, you know? And I think it's just, we, we, it's easy to get stuck in the moment of, oh, wow, like things are happening and I don't know what's going on and, you know, let me just try this. But then when you start thinking about your whole progression and then how you fit into the world, you're like, wow. And like, sometimes even me probably saying that to you, like opens up your mind to like, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I've said it to other people and they're like, oh, wait, actually, yeah, this is like really cool stuff that we're doing here. So, um, yeah. Like an idea of like what I want from Can We Talk. I have an idea in terms of, you know, um, moving forward from the talk show, you know, how we can develop it and make it bigger, how we can develop it and, you know, support black creatives yeah uh, you know, how we can develop it and and maybe move into the realm of uh you know black media you know a, a little bit like a, a BET or a revolt oh or, my or like, god i love it well there are there are there are definitely some a lot of ideas that um in fact literally after this i have a meeting with um uh, a new collective of um three incredible um black women um to talk about you know the future of can we talk and, and you know us coming together and turning it into something you know pr endorsements you know working with uh you know just yeah just That's just amazing. To help our community yeah i have some big i mean i feel like you already have a vision and you've already been doing things so i have some really big i mean in my head you have a lot of space to grow like you have so much more to bring because i feel like your ideas and the things that you want to do are like so impactful so i'm super excited to see what you come up with next <laughs> <laughs> um but i would love to kind of i would, I, I don't want to take up too much time because i know people get bored of this shit. so like <laughs> first before we leave i want to talk about being black in the uae like what has yeah. your experience been being black in the UAE and because I, I have my experience but obviously we're all different and we all have different experiences so I want to hear like your story um, being black in the UAE I am um, I've been that's a really good question actually um I know it's a, it's a big that's a big one but I'm a good question yeah. but it's a great question yeah um I I've been really thankful that i've been able to live my life very authentically yeah um and I, I use the word privilege because i i know there are many people here who cannot um totally. i've been able to be in a position that i've you know i've been able to be exactly who i am um you know through my work through regular day-to-day -day interactions yeah through, me you know and um <clears throat> i feel like i've been the most authentic here than i was in my own country mm -hmm. in the uk yeah. maybe also jersey has a lot to do with that you know i'm 35 now so maybe you know obviously, obviously growth and whatever has a lot to do with, with with that authenticity as well and just being more comfortable and confident in myself totally. um, but i am you know, there are some things that, you know, I, I, I wish had, you know, can be better. Um, and, and I hope that I can help to change that, not just for me, but, you know, for other, you know, black men and women here in, in, in Dubai, in the UAE. Yeah. Um, you know, things like recognition, you know, m more recognition within my field that I'm in. You know, the events industry here is very male orientated. Mm. Very, sorry, very male led, rather. Yeah. Um, you know, it's white, it's Indian, it's Arab, yeah. male, predominantly. Um, and, um, but there, I don't see many people like me who look like me, men and women, yeah. um, being given the recognition that they deserve. When I go to things like awards ceremonies here as well, I can't remember the last time I saw someone like me win yeah. an award or even be nominated. Yeah. Um, you know, I open, you know, the business magazines here as well. And I look at the top 100 CEOs and the top 100 successful this and the top 100 that. And I barely see any people that look like me. Yeah. And I think that's something that, um, if that's a, something that I can do to, 
to push that and help that, then I will find a way to do it. Um, but in terms of, yeah, like I've been able to live authentically here and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you said you, you're able to live authentically there because I feel like, and that you're <laughs> able to live more authentic than you were before, because I feel like, I think I feel similarly, I think sometimes it takes leaving you, what you know and where you're from to actually be yourself because where you're from and what you know is what other people put on you. You know, you're, you're expected to be this kind of way just because you're around a certain kind of people that have known you since you were born or since you were little and they have, you know, certain things that they think about you and you yeah. end up leaving that truth just because you want to please. But when you yeah. end up leaving and, you know, doing your own thing and going on your own, you realize that, wait, maybe the way that I was acting before wasn't exactly what I want to be. And now the time for me, I mean, I, this is, I'm talking about myself here, but like, I feel like <laughs> what you're talking about is similar to that. Um, but maybe, wait, I should be doing myself. And then when you do that, you realize, wow, there's yeah. a whole other world. And I'm actually like super happy being somewhere totally different than when yes. I was. Home. So I totally understand that part of it. Um, and I, my heart started like, fluttering when you're like I don't see you know people like me in these you know events and in the top whatever you know whatever yeah. I feel exactly the same way and that's what exactly I want to do and I think you know having a platform to talk about these things is kind of a way for us to just get that out there because I feel like people don't realize that there's not you know I mean I think it's it's I feel like it's so ingrained in you know the world psyche that and it's so ingrained in media and everything that it's a you know white led world or, a, or in the Arab world it's an Arab or Indian led world that they don't even realize that you know people like blacks or other people don't yeah. have a voice and it's yeah. up to really us to be honest to 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 give that um, a boot because who else is going to do it besides us? So I'm glad that you said that and I'm glad that you're, that's your mission because that, that's also my mission. Uh, I'm really impressed by you. I think you're super cool. I mean, this is why I wanted to talk to you in the first place because I know that you have an amazing, an amazing mission and you're doing some really cool things. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today and talking about who you are and us chatting about all this stuff because I think it's the most important thing to be able to do that. Thank you for asking me, really. Uh, yeah, it was, it's nice to talk. It's, yeah. it's good. To yeah, exactly. And I feel like I'm excited to see your um, Can You Talk series blow up yeah. and yeah. your events blow up. And once we get back to normal, your restaurant blow up as well. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, is that your dog in the background? So cute. Oh, yeah. She made a little cameo. Diggy. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I've been wanting a dog for the longest time. Um, but my building doesn't allow any pets, so I'm kind of like annoyed by it. But whatever. But um, anyway, love you. Thank you so much Thank for having so me. Much. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>